Hello and thank you for tuning in for Channel Surfing. So today we're down here at the dock and uh, the boat show's coming up, starts uh, this week. It's a virtual boat show. Um, not quite sure how that's gonna work, um, being as virtual. Um, this time last year, we were all excited to go to the boat show to walk around and find out what boat we were looking for. We didn't really know. And we thought we'd make a video about why we chose the Ranger Tug 27 outboard. Um, and if we could do it, do it all over again, is there anything we would do different? Um, you know, for the, the boat specifically. Um, in order to answer those questions, you need to also understand our past boating experience as well. Um, um, there's no perfect boat. Um, boats are always about compromise and trade-offs. So that's the mindset we go into it with. Um, the last boat we had, we had it for 12 years. It was a, a, a Maxim bow rider, 22 foot. Um, it was 24 foot overall, overall, had a tandem axle trailer. Uh, we drove that boat everywhere. We hit, you know, um, lakes. We hit a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time in Puget Sound with it. We did a lot of fishing with it, um, primarily shellfish. We tried, we tried salmon fishing with it. Um, didn't do all that great. We just couldn't troll slow enough with it. Um, it had a, um, uh, a V8, five liter fuel injected uh, mercury. It was a 260 horsepower, um, three blade prop. That boat would do 60 miles an hour on flat water. Right um, on Puget Sound, you don't need to be doing 60 miles an hour with all the deadheads. So most of the time we were cruising 30, 35 miles an hour through Puget Sound. And that's probably where the, the boat spent three quarters of its time. The trailer was nice um, for storage and, st and so forth, but we spent a lot of time at the, at the boat ramps. Um, we're done with boat ramps. No offense to people that <laughs> like boat ramps. <laughs> that's great. Um, you do what you gotta no do. No more crazy time. <laughs> you know, it, it's pros and cons, right? Boat ramps mean you can take the boat wherever you want. Like, um, you know, this time we decided we didn't want a trailer because we didn't want to deal with the boats. We wanted to be able to grab the keys, head, you know, leave the house, get in the boat and drive away. We didn't want to have to wait in lines. We didn't have to pay boat launch fees. We didn't have to, we didn't want to have to worry if there was parking at boat ramp, you know, for us to be able to, to go there for the day. Um, you know, there's some trade-offs to that though, because, you know, we thought it'd be nice if we could uh, take our Ranger Tug down to the Columbia River without a trailer. That's a pretty long haul um, across some um, the coast, along the west coast of Washington, which is all open ocean. I don't know that I'd feel comfortable doing that. So, you know, maybe we get kind of landlocked a little bit up here in the Puget Sound, but there's enough waterway between the San Juans and all the Puget Sound into, into British Columbia and even north into southeast Alaska. Enough waterway there for to, to keep us entertained. Um, so knowing that so we said no to the trailer um, because we've done that before and you know if we want to go on the lake We can actually go through the locks and get on Lake Washington and get in some fresh water We'd probably spend more time on the water because we just grabbed the keys and we're like 10 minutes from here Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit easier that way So um, what we ended up using our pass boat for was we did wakeboarding um, Primarily with it and then obviously a lot of shell fishing and then just kind of cruising and hanging out so looking for our new boat, we said, what is it that we were looking for? So high level, what we were looking for was we wanted a fully enclosed cabin because it's the Northwest and it would lengthen our season if we could have a, ha a cabin to stay out of the elements. So if heater. It's a heater. Um, <laughs> something so we don't get wet when it rains, right? We had a little canvas thing. We would all you know crouch below on the, the Maxim to try and stay somewhat warm, but we didn't have a heater or, <clears throat> or anything like that on it. So um, the new boat had to have a full enclosed cabin. We wanted a heater. We wanted a bathroom on the boat so that, um, you know, we could get away from the, everybody use the potty, launch the boat, and then go drop your pots and then run to the nearest, <laughs> you know, dock to go to the rest, restroom, come back, you know, go pull your pots. That was what our normal day to day was. Um, you know, I also wanted something we could anchor with overnight because we thought we could, we could explore more places if we could just get somewhere and then stay there for a day or two. One of the biggest surprises that we found when we bought the Ranger Tug was we went into it with the mindset that it'd be day trips only and with the occasional, you know, weekender we might spend on it. And then maybe once or twice a, a season, we would do like, you know, a week on it, right? Once we got the boat, we've actually found the inverse uh, has happened to us. Uh, we spend more overnights on the boat than we actually do day trips because the distance we have to travel, like the San Juans is... Um, you know 40 miles away from from where we're we're moored at uh that's two hours uh less than two hours to get there right so um once we're there so if you did that in a day say that's four hours of, of driving on the boat and that's four hours at 25 you know um call it 25 knots um 
once we're there, we can just drop anchor. We can hit a we can hit a, a moorage. We can just stay on the boat comfortably and spend more time at our destination instead of running back and forth to the to the boat ramp um, like we did with our, our previous boat. So looking at the kind of boat that we wanted, um, there was outboard versus diesel. That's probably the biggest question people ask us. Why did the outboard over the diesel? There's pros and cons between the two. So outboard um, I did specifically because the last boat I had, I had a lot of maintenance on it. I couldn't do uh, a, a lot of the maintenance on the boat. So it was in the shop. Um, it was expensive and you lost time that was water. that was expensive um like like give you an example just doing the lower unit um to change the impeller out on the uh on the maxim with a with a um, mercury stern drive i didn't have the tools or the lift to take the lower unit off myself on the outboard i can do that myself and change the impeller so all the routine maintenance i can do on the outboard um without having to, to take it to the shop i still have to get the boat out of the water um and not having a trailer that's a um <clears throat> that's a bigger challenge but you know you um we've been using dagmars they pull the boat out and it works great otherwise i could use like everett for a haul out and we pay for a spot at dagmars just so that we can do yeah, waxing so we, and maintenance yeah it makes it convenient the the diesel you know obviously puts the engine inside the boat so you lose storage space in the boat um, the diesel has a huge advantage in that you have a place to put the dinghy on the transom. We gave we gave that up. That's, that was a compromise. So when we move our dinghy around, we have a video on how we do our inflatable dinghy. Um, it's not nearly as nice as if it was a diesel and I just had the, the dinghy mounted on the transom. Um, but that, that, here and again, that's pros and cons. There's, everything's a compromise. Well, there's always the lift you can get for the uh, outboard motors now. It goes over the top for the dinghy. Right, Ranger Tug makes makes a lift kit on the back. We're we're on the fence whether we would want that or not at this point. I mean, it does make things a little claustrophobic. Working around the engine, it kind of covers it. If you want to check the oil on the engine, you have to deploy the dinghy to check the oil on the engine. Again, it's all all about compromise. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the other thing I was looking for was a large gas tank. Right when I looked at the Ranger Tug 23 versus 25 versus 27. 27 had a 150 gallon gas tank, which was larger than the other two. Um, that gives it more range. I also liked the 300 horse as opposed to the two, 200 or the 250. Uh, what I've since learned is actually the 250 and the 300 horse motors have a 70 amp alternator and the 200 horse only has a 50 amp and that, those, that, that higher um, amperage alternator um, is of great value trying to recharge the batteries when we're, we're uh, at anchor. So I like the larger um, alternator as well. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted a kicker motor. This, um, you know, I did have mechanical issues with my last boat. Um, fortunately, I never had to be towed back from sea. I did have one, um, one mechanical issue that was catastrophic that I barely made it back to the dock and actually had to be pushed back to the dock within sight of it. Um, having a kicker motor gives me a little bit more peace of mind that I have another engine that can at least get me to shore. There's pros and cons with the kicker. I mean, it's tied steering wise to the main engine so you can steer it from the helm. Um, however, the throttle controls are in the cockpit. So if you had to like maneuver docking, it would be challenging, mm -hmm. but at least they'll get me within um, uh, eye shot of the, uh, uh, of the marina. Um, it's also more economical too. It burns about a gallon an hour at full throttle. Uh, and pushes the boat about five knots, which is pretty good. And for fishing, it's a huge advantage as well. That was one of the reasons why I couldn't do salmon fishing on the Maxim was as soon as I put the boat in gear, I'm doing three and a half, four knots. With the kicker, I can do a half a knot, one knot, two knots, whatever I need to, uh, to do better at salmon fishing. Um, transom sink and the raw water washdown, I really liked on the 27. I'm having a sink uh, with hot water. Um, <laughs> You know, um, it's fresh water on the uh, the transom is nice when I'm back there fishing. I have a place to wash my hands. The raw water wash down is great to not use my fresh water in the boat to actually clean up the cockpit, which can sometimes get pretty dirty when we're out there fishing. Scotty downrigger pads and plugs, obviously for fishing. I also use the Scotty downrigger plug to power um, the uh, uh, pot puller for doing crabbing and shrimping. Uh, the it's a 40 amp circuit, which is uh, just perfect for the pot puller that I have. In addition, the cockpit table and the cockpit refrigerator um, were really nice to have. 
The um, cockpit refrigerator we like because it's our drink cooler. That's all that goes in there. And it's got a small freezer as well. Um, but that way I don't have to worry about, you know, bringing drinks on the boat all the time and putting it with an ice chest and kicking the ice chest um, all over the place. One of the things like we had on the Maxim um, bow rider that I really liked was the rear seat on the boat. You lifted that seat up and there was a spot for the, the ice chest. It was integral to the boat. So there was always a spot for the ice mm -hmm. chest to be. I still had to fill it up with ice and, and such, but you weren't kicking it around in the cockpit. And, and having the cockpit refrigerator kind of solves that for us as well. Um, the cockpit table was nice for outdoor dining. Um, you know, we've got the dining table, and then obviously if it's nice out, we can set the cockpit table up and, and hang out outside. So, um, sometimes I'll work from the boat, right? This is a nice place to work back there. Um, having the cockpit table meant the dining table in the V-berth we don't use. Uh, it, it was set up the very first day we took delivery of the boat, and ever since then, the V-berth has been a stateroom, effectively. We don't ever use that as a dining table. And we knew that's what it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, moving forward on the boat, the uh, um, other big advantage we liked with the 27-foot was the propane stove and oven. On the 23 and the 25, it was a single burner um, uh, electric or alcohol um, uh, stove top where the 27 you actually get a two burner stove and an oven all based off of propane and we really like that for cooking um, especially because the electric grill that you can get uh, that comes with the 27 we have that um, doesn't really run off the uh, you need to be on shore power for that that to really affect it it, mm -hmm. it draws an enormous amount of current uh, for heat for the heating element so it doesn't work well if you're underway you're trying to run the inverter off your batteries it's just not that great we're having the uh, the dual burner propane stove we can have hot meals and cook lasagna or spaghetti we've cooked we've caught crab and steamed it same day and ate it on the boat um we also um, have uh four drawer three drawers and four cupboards in the galley and the other ones have two yeah there's a lot more storage underneath with the, the 27 for the galley side uh, the diesel heater, um, that was important to us as well. It's a Wabasto diesel heater. Um, it doesn't mean you get heat without electricity. You still need the batteries for the fan to move the, the heat around. And there's two, there's two vents that blow in. Um, but there's a five gallon diesel tank on the boat, which is kind of, kind of interesting. People go, oh, you have diesel on the boat? And it's a five gallon tank for the Wabasto heater. Um, and I thought there's a fuel gauge actually we have for it, which is really cool to see how much diesel is left. And it lasts a long time. Um, yeah, we only filled it up yeah, once. And, it, and it, heats, it heats the boat up really good. Um, other big difference factors for us between the uh, between the 23, 25, and 27 was um, the head. So in the 27, you get a full head. You have a, a there's a door. You open it. You go in. You've got a sink. You have a toilet. You have a shower. In the 25 and 23, there are compromises as as to uh, um, how how small the head actually is. The, the 23, I remember, like the shower is not even in the head. It actually converts the V-Bert to be part of your shower. Um, we didn't like that. We also didn't like the idea that if we were sleeping in the V-Bert, does somebody have to wake us up to use the bathroom, right? The 27, um, you can get in and out of the head uh, without having to wake up the people that are sleeping in the V-Bert. And you also have a privacy curtain that closes you off Right, it closes the V-berth off from the rest mm -hmm. of the boat. Um, so that was pretty important to us. Um, also, um, this is something most people think about. So on our on our Maxim bow rider, because of the layout of the boat, I had the the pot puller for doing crab pots on the port side of the boat, mm -hmm. and the helm was on the starboard side of the boat. So every time the driver is approaching the pots, they're on the side of the they're on the port side of the boat, which is the hardest for the driver to see. Mm -hmm. Right, and usually I'm pulling pots, and my wife was the one driving the boat, so um, <clears throat> made it more challenging. So if I could get everything on one side of the boat, that would have been preferred. So the 27's floor plan lines up the helm on the starboard side, and then on the cockpit, there's um, Ranger calls it the uh, the opening glass bulkhead with reversible seat. Um, you know, um, but you see it on the photographs; it's actually the Right behind the helm, there's a window on the bulkhead that goes all the way up and um, allows direct line of sight 
to the cockpit all on the starboard side it just makes fishing so much easier because now you know um, i'm working the pots uh you know on the davit and i'm on the starboard side mm -hmm. the helm's on the starboard side so as, as my wife approaches the buoys everything is all where all of us can see it we're basically all leaning on the starboard side to to um to look at that which is which was a lot nicer um and i also prefer the double wide helm seat because then you know wife and i can sit up there while we're driving the boat or usually it's the dog and me um sitting there <laughs> which is kind of nice yeah the um <clears throat> and that was that was the major uh major issue or the major things that we wanted um if we could do it all over again is there anything we would do different i would say um my own the only thing i wish would have happened differently in the boat is i wish a battery monitor would have came with it um, that's probably my only criticism um, for the boat. The boat. These boats are highly technical. I've got AC power, I've got DC power, I've got an inverter, I've got shore power hookup. I've got, you know, um, came with two house battery banks. Um, you know, it's got a microwave on board. It's got a coffee maker on board. There's a, there's a DC powered um, TV and DVD player on board. So once you turn the engine off, now you're, you're on those batteries, not having a gauge to see where the battery's at uh, really hurt me in the first year. Um, but we since remedied all that. I mean, battery miners aren't that expensive, so we went and we had one added, and that helped me out enormously understand the electrical loads. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> but other than that, the boat's been fantastic. And like I said, we we find ourselves more overnights than we do day trips on it because the boat's just that comfortable. Um, we did a ten day trip in the San Juans, ten nights on the boat, and it was wonderful. So comfortable. Us, our grown daughter, and three dogs. It was comfortable, there's enough room for everyone. Okay, and, and the mattress topper. Mattress topper was a, was a requirement. Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we did the first month on the boat um, with just the cushion sleeping. Well, because it was on order. <laughs> yeah, we had it on order. We <laughs> if I had to do it over again, I'd order it before we got the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right. I would have yeah. brought it with us that first night. <laughs> yeah, having that three inch uh, mattress topper really helps it a lot. It makes a it's huge a, difference. It's yeah. so comfortable. Like, and if you guys are just watching our channel, if you've watched before, you know, I've got a lot of, of, of videos about upgrades we've been doing. Those upgrades are tailoring the boat to us after we've had the boat for um, six months now. Mm -hmm. we, you know, and in those six months, we put 200 hours on the boat, traveled 2,000 nautical miles, burnt 1,000 gallons of gas mm -hmm. um, in those six months. Just went over, right? And we just had all kinds of fun and stuff in the boat. So now we kind of understand yeah. what it can do, what it can't do, and what we want it to do. Um, you know, and the San Juans has so many beautiful anchor spots. There's great marinas, but the anchor spots are just peaceful and wonderful in the summer. Beautiful. Yeah, so all the upgrades are just tailoring the boat to us mm -hmm. with what we want it to, what we want to do. Well, and it. also we're looking at the future. We want to do Southeast Alaska. We want to do Canada if it opens so that we can explore those areas. Yeah, the big one is I want to go up to southeast Alaska and do some halibut and fish and salmon fishing in southeast Alaska. I'd like to go all the way up to Glacier Bay. Um, I've got the big enough gas tank, you know, and, and such. I've done the math that I can do that within the 100 hours maintenance schedule for the engine to basically leave and come back. And I'd be right at the 100 hours on the return trip um, to do that. But, uh, you know, that's setting up the batteries to, to last longer, the solar panel to help out more because mm -hmm. it's further between uh, uh, marinas up there. Um, maybe not all marinas have power. Um, they all have gas, which is good. Yep. You know, and then, you know, having uh, enough storage for food and that kind of stuff on the boat. So, <clears throat> well, cool. Thanks for watching our videos. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and stay tuned for more channel surfing.